Well, hello and welcome to Rocky Mountain Audio Festival 2019. This is ELAC Americas and I am Andrew Jones. So I'm going to be telling you what we're doing here, what we're introducing, what we're showing that we've shown before but you might have missed. So let me start off with the system number two, a full blown system. It's the ELAC Carina bookshelf speakers driven by ELAC Alchemy Electronics. And Peter Madnick is here with us to talk about and demonstrate those electronics. And we're running it all from the Discovery Rune Essentials server. So it's a system that is uh, in total around five and a half to six thousand dollars and set it in the room, new show, new room, you never know what to expect. So we brought everything with us to uh, potentially correct any problems with the room. And we found when we got here, we kind of plonked the speakers down, technical term there, and uh, found it sounded pretty good the first place we put them. So that was very fortunate. And then we dressed up the room with what we needed to just control it to the best degree. So I think we're getting superb sound out of this system and uh, encourage you all to come along and have a listen to it. In the morning, we're playing something different. Uh, whereas the afternoon system we've already shown at various shows and even had reviews, all the components in the morning system are brand new. Starting with our DS101 two-channel amplifier. We've had an earlier version, the EA101, which is in a sort of all-in-one piece. It's uh, DAC, uh, DSP, uh, amplification, and uh, two channels, 80 watts per channel of bash amplification, which is a, an efficient form of class AB, so we can package a lot of power into a small space. But it's more than just a simple two-channel amplifier. We put in a DAC, we put in DSP, and with that, we put in the room correction algorithms that we've had available in our subwoofers. So now on a two channel system, your main speakers can also be equalized for the room. And we use a, quite a novel way of doing this. We use the microphone that's embedded in your phone or tablet, which although it's not calibrated, we can actually get around that by first making a measurement close to the speaker, and that becomes our reference point. Then we make a further measurement at the listening location, and then by simply EQing the listening location response to match the response measured in the near field of the speaker, we take the characteristics of the microphone out of the equation. So it becomes a very simple way of EQing a system into the room. And in addition to that, we provided a subwoofer dedicated output from the two channel amplifier. So it becomes very easy to integrate a subwoofer. And at the same time, it puts in uh, a a selectable high pass filter into the main channel so you can take the bass load off of that main channel and hence play louder and the subwoofer then provides the bass. Well one of the biggest problems with integrating a subwoofer in a two channel system is how do you do it? As a speaker designer I'm the one who normally integrates bass to mid-range to tweeter and with subwoofer satellite combinations we go you have a go let's see how you get on with it. So we built in an algorithm to do that automatically. It, you measure close to the speaker, you measure close to the subwoofer, you take those two responses, it then integrates them together and finds the optimum blending, and then you move out into the listening position, and now it runs a phase adjustment because the subwoofer might actually be further away from you from the listening position than the main speaker is. So it corrects for that phase, then it runs a room EQ. So all of that is built into this two-channel amplifier. So we thought, well, while we're putting DSP in there, why don't we put in Dolby Digital Decoding so we can get 2.1 channel Dolby Decoding and run from, for example, the optical input straight out of your TV. And now you've got a great sounding 2.1 system for a secondary movie system in your house. So that's what the original one contained. And it also had USB input. But we found that people aren't really using USB, you know, direct connected from a computer to a two-channel system. So we removed that module and replaced it by a Rune endpoint receiver module. So now this system is a full Rune endpoint um, streaming amplifier Room EQ subwoofer control system. Um, it also does Spotify Connect. Um, it does uh, AirPlay, uh, Bluetooth. So it's pretty much any way you want to get to your music 
uh, to listen to your music is embedded in that system and all for $750. So that's our primary unit in this uh, system that we play in the morning. Now we partner that with a new speaker which is being launched at this show. Hardly anyone heard it until we got to the show. <laughs> I had a brief listening to the, my final sample for the show just before I shipped it out here. And this is the debut reference. We launched DLAC Americas with the original debut speakers and then last year or so we upgraded it to debut 2.0 with a small price increase of around $20 a pair. And that was targeted as the best sound you can get for the money and we kept the looks of it very simple, just a vinyl cabinet and trim ring and that was about it. With debut reference we've gone further, we've both upgraded the sound and the looks of it. We've gone to a painted, satin painted baffle, better vinyl for, for the wrap of the cabinet, a fresher look so it's either a satin white front panel with stripped oak type of look for the main cabinet or you're going to have satin black cabinet with a walnut kind of veneer. The cabinet itself, the construction has improved. As I've said before with the debut, I place priority on the drivers, then the crossover, and cabinet comes in in third. And that's obvious when you wrap the cabinet, you can hear the cabinet. And debut two went a bit further and put a bit of bracing in, but you could still hear the cabinet. You could also hear a thonk, um, which was due to the weight of the magnet kind of bouncing with the chassis. So in the new version, I've gone for a stronger, stiffer cabinet with uh, much better bracing, peripheral bracing on the inside. I've taken that woofer, kept the same moving parts and magnet, but I put it on a cast aluminum chassis, so it's much stronger. You don't get that resonance. The tweeter itself is mostly the same, but a, a new waveguide to better integrate it to the baffle and a new more open grill mesh to not roll off the very top end. So now it's flat out to um, well, 6 dB down at around 40K. So along with that, I've upgraded the crossover and it, not so much in terms of component quality because it was already laminated steel core inductors for the base driver, air core inductors everywhere else, film caps on the treble section. But I have added components. <laughs> I'm not the kind who fears complexity in crossover networks, so I've used extra components to flatten and control the response and get it more linear. Along with that, I've now got a, a front-mounted vent, just like the change we made from original debut to debut two of moving the vent to the front. The vent has now become a slot vent, a, a quite neat way of providing a slot vent uh, that is also um, flared both on the outside edge and the inside edge so we can get lower noise and give an enhanced look to the speaker. So a lot of changes, a lot of improvements, and the price has gone up accordingly, but it's now $500 a pair, and I think it represents remarkable value for that price point, continuing what we've been trying to do with ELAC Americas of really, really good, um, affordable systems. The speakers will be shipping in about November time, so you won't have too long to wait, I hope, and uh, thank you. Well, hello and welcome to Rocky Mountain Audio Festival 2019 and ELAC Americas. We're in room 2019. No, we're not. <laughs> Six, 6019. 6129. Okay. We'll see you in your other room then. <laughs>